Hello and welcome to another Quick Tips video. In this contemporary age, not everyone is making music using a keyboard. I mean, to start with, not everyone can actually play the keyboard, which is not really so much of a problem. So far in this Quick Tips video, we've looked at how you can combine the chord track with a number of different features inside of Cubase to create music and arrange music. In today's Quick Tip video, we're going to use the chord track for a live application. And when I say live, yeah, you could use it at a gig, but primarily we're going to look at triggering different chords using an external MIDI controller. Now this is using the live transform feature inside of the chord track and also chord pads. Let's go check it out. Previously, we imported an audio file in and we use chord track to control the audio file. Today, we're going to use a VST instrument and we're going to record a MIDI bass part, but we're going to use live transform inside of chord track to do that. So to start with, I'm finding a bass sound. I can preview a sound using my MIDI keyboard. When I find something I like, I double click and it loads the instrument into the project window. Now I'm going to live transform and I'm selecting chords. Before we go too far, let's spruce up this bass sound a little bit. So I'm going over to audio inserts and I'm going to select the VST bass amp. Once I've loaded up, I've got a number of different types of classic bass amps that I can apply to this VST instrument. If you're not sure which amp is which, just stick with the presets and you can find them up in the preset menu. Just scroll through and find something that you like. It's obviously got a bit of chorus and delay on it. As I'm running up my chord pads, I'm noticing that they're not playing the notes they normally would. And that is because the live transform chord function has locked them into the exact notes that are in the chord track. This means I can't play the wrong note. Let's try recording something. It's quite bizarre because I'm actually just hitting random pads. The only thing I need to worry about really is the timing. And I can still go and quantize that once I'm done, or even edit it. In the previous video, we went and found a baseline that was also an audio file in the media bay, and we got chord track to control that. But I tend to think in this video, we're taking it one step further, because in this video, we can add our own flavor to the actual groove or the timing, which is a really important part of recording a track. We've recorded one note at a time, but what about chords? I've moved up to my electric piano track, and I'm going to turn on chord track, but before I show you chord track, let's quickly turn on chords inside of Live Transform and go over to the MIDI pads and play two notes at the same time. Now chord track has locked those two notes perfectly in line with the chords that are contained inside of the chord track. So we can easily deal with chords. Let's turn that off for now and go and play some of the pads and the chord pads. These chords are currently the factory default, so I want to align these pads to the chords that are contained inside of the chord track. Now I've got all of the chords from my chord track inside of my chord pads. Next step is to set my pads up so that I can remote control them from my keyboard. So I've gone to the editor and the remote control, and I'm going to MIDI learn, and I'm clicking on the bottom pad and the top pad. So that means everything inside of this range will be assigned to a chord. That is ridiculously easy. Now I'm controlling a whole entire chord with one finger. I'm gonna try putting an electric piano down. This makes it so easy to put down piano and guitar parts, but you can actually take it a step further back in the remote control editor by setting up a remote control for different voicings and different tensions. 